The SEC is being sued by a new crypto exchange along with the Crypto Freedom Alliance of Texas. This is big. The crypto industry is going on the offensive against the SEC and Gary Genser. And Elizabeth Warren is very afraid of John Deaton's campaign against her. She is sending multiple emails asking for donations. And Switzerland's Post Finance launches crypto trading and custody service. This is big. We're going to break it down and much more. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, we got huge news today. We have a new crypto exchange by the name of Legit and they go by the title Legilex. They and the Crypto Freedom Alliance of Texas filed a lawsuit against against the SEC and Gary Genser, they stated, we're holding the federal government accountable and fighting for clear, consistent regulation of digital assets in Texas. Folks, I love this. The crypto industry is going on the offensive. They're not scared of the SEC and Gary Genser anymore. In fact, one could argue the SEC and Gary Genser are in a weakened state right now because of the losses to Grayscale, to Ripple, and the scolding they've been getting in courts where the judges have been calling out the SEC. Look at the dead box situation. The judge threatened to sanction the SEC lawyers. In the Ripple lawsuit, Judge Sarah Netburn said the SEC lacks faithful allegiance to the law. And in the Grayscale case, which the SEC lost, they were called arbitrary and capricious. I mean, th this is groundbreaking, right? And it just shows what a scumbag regulator Gary Genser is. He is clearly not trying to be a neutral party working with the industry. He's trying to attack it and beat it down. He's reporting to Elizabeth Warren. He's taking his orders from her, and she's taking her orders from the TradFi incumbents, which are being disrupted. So a lot of folks weighed in on this news. But first, I want to share what one of the founders of uh, Legilex had to say. He tweeted out, today, we at Legilex and the Crypto Freedom Alliance of Texas sued the SEC to put an end to its aggressive and unorthodox enforcement actions against our industry. We are asking the court to recognize the limits of the SEC's authority so law-abiding founders and companies in the crypto space can build the future here in America. Well put. So they did a full press release. Uh, this is making the news rounds. Uh, I love it, folks. Um, and here, Amanda Tuminelli, who's the chief legal officer at DeFi Education Fund, said the following. So this is huge. Today, Legilex and the Crypto Freedom Alliance of Texas sued the SEC seeking a declaration that secondary market sales of digital assets like the ones that Legilex intends to facilitate through the Legit.exchange are not sales of securities. Plaintiffs make one claim under the Declaratory Judgment Act, uh, asking the court to one, order that secondary market sales of digital assets are not sales of securities, two, declare legit.exchange does not need to register with the SEC as an exchange broker or clearinghouse, and three, prevent the SEC from bringing an enforcement action against Legilex or similarly situated CFAT members premised on any purported failure to register as a securities exchanges, uh, brokers, or clearing agencies. This is big, right? This is what many of the crypto exchanges, if not all, are facing in the United States. Coinbase is getting sued. Kraken is getting sued. But Prometheum got their license. And they're getting that approval to custody digital asset securities, as Gary Genser would call them. But we know it's all BS from Gary Genser and the SEC. So I love this. And I hope more companies join in and sue the hell out of the SEC. Gary Genser is in a tough spot right now from a PR standpoint, taking these losses. She continues here saying, to be clear, this is the first time that I'm aware of that a crypto market participant has proactively sued the SEC pre-launch of their project and pre-anything by the SEC to ask a court to adjudicate digital asset-related securities questions. Plaintiffs are not looking for money or any reward other than legal clarity on these important questions. I love it, folks. I, I, if you are a crypto holder, you want to see this. And remember, I was calling for this years ago. I kept tweeting at Brian Armstrong at Coinbase. 
when I had Paul Grewal of Coinbase, chief legal officer at Coinbase on the podcast, I asked them, is the is Coinbase ready to sue the SEC and go after him? And that was before they got the Wells notice. So uh, I've been calling for this a long time. After the Ripple lawsuit, you know, I had John Deaton on and we were talking about it. This was an attack on the entire crypto industry, not just Ripple. And I'm glad people are waking up to that even years later and they're going on the offensive. We know Coinbase is actively in a lawsuit with the SEC, suing them as well for clarity. So I hope Coinbase wins. I hope Ledgelex wins here. And the pressure is on, folks. We got the Ethereum spot ETF up next, and uh, we'll see what Gary Genser decides to do. Now, Brian Kintens, who we've had on the podcast, he's a former CFTC commissioner. He now works at A16Z Crypto. He said, for too long, crypto entrepreneurs have been asking for legal clarity on how to build Web3 projects compliantly. The only answers they've received are enforcement actions. This case shouldn't have been necessary. Hopefully, it provides an important step towards achieving that clarity so this technology can reach its full potential here in the U.S. Now, a Meta Law man who I just recently had on the podcast, uh, James Murphy, he weighed in. He said, this is a big deal. Crypto Freedom Alliance of Texas just sued the SEC seeking a declaration that crypto assets traded on secondary markets are not securities, and they brought the big guns. Paul Clement, a former U.S. Solicitor General, has handled over 100 cases before the Supreme Court. Everybody, get your amicus briefs ready. So as you can imagine, you're going to have a ton of amicus briefs coming in supporting this. I'm sure Coinbase is going to join the party and a bunch of the crypto advocacy groups. I think Coinbase, Kraken, and, and Ledgelex and all these folks should join together and just go after the SEC. Now, here's some blood-boiling news that's probably going to get you upset because it certainly got me upset. Layden Stewart, you may say, who the hell is that? Well, she led the SEC's crypto unit and actions against Coinbase and Ripple, is leaving the regulator, listen to this, to join White and Case in the white collar division to lead crypto group. This is a firm that advised Fidelity in the Bitcoin ETF. The revolving door continues. It stinks. It needs to be fixed. It's unbelievable what's happening. On one hand, I understand why these companies would try to grab these people and bring them over, you know, to, to navigate the uncertainty that that's what's happening here. But we can't just reward these people. They, they were at the SEC attacking crypto companies, and now you're going to go work for them. It's the same thing that happened with Bill Hinman and Jay Clayton. Right, they both went to work for crypto companies. We know uh, what they did and the mess they left. Uh, Jay Clayton filed the lawsuit, ran out the door the next day. Pathetic, cowardly. So uh, it's unbelievable. Eric Bal Balkan has highlighted th this news, and he said she cited the Bitcoin ETFs in the press release. Next up, Gensler joining Grayscale? Question he asked. That's how insane this is, right? It's the revolving door. And it's not just a, you know with crypto. It, it stinks. And, and government needs to fix this. We can't have this nonsense going on. Now, Paul Grewal, chief legal officer at Coinbase, uh, he tweeted out the following. Today, Coinbase responded to the SEC's request for the comment on the proposed Grayscale Ether Trust. Uh, he said, uh, paid 27 pages and 96 citations that provide the one, legal, two, technical, and three, economic rationale for approval. Our letter lays out what anyone knows who's paid even the slightest bit of attention to the subject. ETH is not a security. In fact, before and after the merge, the SEC, the CFTC, and the market have treated ETH not as a security, but as a commodity. Ether's proof of stake has demonstrably a uh, strong governance that exhibits robust characteristics across ownership, concentration, consensus, liquidity, and governance, mitigating risks of fraud and manipulation. So I agree with him, um, but this is why we need clarity, right? Because Bill Hinman did say Ethereum is not a security, but what did we see? Gary Gensler, even before Congress, does not want to echo those statements. So there is some uncertainty here. I disagree a little bit with Paul. I agree Ether is not a security. I believe a lot of cryptos in the markets are not security because they become decentralized. Um, but we need the clarity. We need the rules. How do, how do you differentiate? What's what's the breakdown? What's the ratio? You know, All these things have to be ironed out. But uh, Gary Gensler and the SEC don't want to do that, and Congress has to act. Now, 
Craig Salm, who is chief legal officer at Grayscale, weighed in on Paul's tweet. He said, Paul Grewal in Coinbase's comment letter was a key component in Grayscale versus the SEC, which ultimately led to a Bitcoin ETF approval. Thank you for your continued support and leadership now on Ethereum, ETS, Paul, and Coinbase team. I think the Ethereum spot ETF is going to be approved. BlackRock and all these guys want it. And Gary Gensler is going to look like a buffoon. And, you know, you put that into uh, the mix of the election coming up and, and the likes of Elizabeth Warren and the Biden administration. Gensler is a Democrat. He's Democrat appointed. So he, he's in a tough place with all these losses. And if he wants to battle in court, he's going to lose again. Now, folks, quick word from our sponsor, and that is VeChain. Many of you know I hold the VET token, which is the native token on this platform. VeChain is one of the top blockchains out there. It's a layer one enterprise grade blockchain. They are looking to solve real world problems and helping enterprises to be able to move to tokenization, supply chain management, uh, tracing and tracking and much more. Uh, think of, you know, if you go to Amazon and one day you'll be able to look at the full history and tracing and tracking of a product, VeChain is looking to help do that. So it is a great platform. Once again, I've held the token for a long time. Uh, I'm an investor in the token, and uh, that's why I've accepted them as a sponsor, because I believe in the project and the blockchain. And like I said, I'm a token holder. So if we'd like to learn more about VeChain, go to vchain.org. Link will be in the description. Learn about this great project. Now, Senator Elizabeth Warren, folks, <laughs> she is so scared of John Deaton. Um, the, she tweeted at John Deaton, calling him a MAGA Republican and so forth. And I tweeted at John. I said, I smell fear because the only reason she would be giving John, who is a political nobody, he doesn't have any political background, right? If you guys read his book, you know his, his background. He's been on the podcast. Uh, he, he doesn't have like some massive war chest. He's not some rich politician or hi highly funded. The man is fighting on behalf of XRP holders. Um, he's got a lot of fight in him. He's got a lot of heart. I do believe he can win. I shared my reasons in yesterday's podcast. You know, the first layer is the macro, and that is Democrats are not in a good position. Biden is not in a good position. So Elizabeth Warren is, you know, she's lumped into that. So uh, it, it, she's in a weakened spot as well. Um, and then, you know, she has her anti-crypto army, Gary Gensler taking a loss. So She's sending out emails after emails, begging people to donate to her. Here, uh, Eleanor Terrett of Fox Business said, Senator Warren sends another plea for funding to her donors in the wake of this morning's campaign announcement from John Deaton. Warren admits it's going to take a strong grassroots movement to, to compete and win. <laughs> I smell fear, folks. So we got to keep supporting her. Um, and like I said, she tried to throw John into some like, you know, MAGA Republican, like extremist category. But we know John is not, he's not even nowhere near that. Uh, even Charles Gasparino, Fox Business, uh, weighed in. He said, calling John Deaton a MAGA Republican, I know MAGAs and I know Deaton, is pretty absurd and sounds desperate. Why is Senator Warren so worried? Yeah, indeed. People are picking up on this. Perry Ann Boring of uh, the Chamber of Digital Commerce tweeted out, she said, clearly Warren is scared of Deaton's bid. Her campaign is already all hands on deck. They are going to do everything they can to deflect from her failed policies that have hurt Massachusetts and the United States. This is a race to watch. And uh, I think she's scared, folks. And, and this is why we're going to keep amplifying this news. We're going to keep pushing for donations for John. I've donated. If you haven't, please do. And uh, even Jesse Powell, who is uh, the form, who's the founder of Kraken Exchange, he just tweeted out that he donated and he's excited about this. So you, John's going to get some big donations from the crypto industry. And of course, crypto voters are going to vote for him in Massachusetts because they don't like Elizabeth Warren. Now, speaking of politicians, um, here, Christopher Perkins, who is the president at CoinFund, he tweeted out a photo with Congressman Warren Davidson and a bunch of the people who work at CoinFund saying, thank you, Congressman Warren Davidson, for stopping by CoinFund offices in New York to talk about crypto policy, your steadfast and tireless support of the industry, and your continued focus on advancing bipartisan American ideals that include embracing responsible innovation and leading in technology are deeply appreciated. So we're seeing pro-crypto members of Congress, even the Senate, are going out talking to the industry. This is what Gensler should be doing, by the way. And and Hester Peirce is the only one who has really tried to do this and meeting with people, talking to them, putting out common sense uh, rules and ideas. 
But Genser, like I said, he is a scumbag regulator reporting to corrupt Elizabeth Warren. So, you know, what can you expect? But great to see members of Congress getting educated, engaging with the industry. It's, it's a great thing. Now, Switzerland's Post Finance launches crypto trading and custody service. We are seeing the global adoption of crypto from retail to institutional investors. A lot of on and off ramps being built. It's pretty amazing what's happening, folks. Uh, so, so exciting. And let me give you the details here. So Swiss Post fully owned financial subsidiary Post Finance announced on Tuesday that it is launching a new crypto service on Wednesday morning. So that was this morning. Swiss Post is the national postal service of Switzerland. The announcement explains this will enable its customers to purchase or securely store an initial range of 11 cryptocurrencies at the click of a mouse or even set up a crypto saving plan. The launch aims to promote user friendliness, transparency, and attractive conditions for all. Post Finance is regulated by the Swiss Financial Market Supervisory Authority and has been granted a license in accordance with Switzerland's Banking Act. It has more than 2.5 million customers. The new crypto service is in collaboration with Finma regulated crypto bank Signum. Post Finance will be the first systematically important bank in Switzerland to bring crypto trading directly to its customers, the announcement adds. Folks, we are seeing banks, stock exchanges, the biggest investment firms in the world, uh, hedge funds, you name it. They are all getting involved in crypto. Here in the United States, we obviously have BlackRock, Fidelity, and so forth. And then you go to the Asian markets, you go to Europe and so forth. They are all headed towards crypto, integrating, building different products, launching ETFs, launching custody trading, and if you have been an OG subscriber to this podcast, going back to, let's say, 2017, 2018, remember I was talking about this? They will all come because is this, is, this technology is here to stay. It's the next layer on the internet. It's not going away. It's not a fad. It is the next layer on the internet. Does it need more fine tuning and further iteration? Of course, just like every technology. Look at when the internet started. It started with dial-up. It was a lot of friction. It was annoying. It was hard. It was complicated. But then it got easier as the technology progressed. Same thing's going to happen here. And folks, I I've often gave the mock scenario. Your bank will be calling you to invest in crypto. Mr. Jones, how are you doing today? Do you know we offer Bitcoin and Ethereum and all their altcoins uh, trading? You can also invest in ETFs. And you don't have to worry. We will custody it for you. And it will appear on your statements. You'll log into your app and it'll be there. Folks, that's what's coming. And it's it's going to be amazing, and for us who are early adopters, and uh, you know we are ahead of the curve here, early in the S curve adoption model, and I can't wait to see uh, what this bull market peak will bring us as far as prices and future bull market cycles. I, I've been here for multiple bull and bear market. And experience is a great teacher. You know, my first go around, I was scared. I didn't know what I was doing, but I spent the time to educate myself and to read and watch videos and listen to podcasts and understand the market cycles and the charts. Now I'm more confident in the market and how to make money in it and understanding the technology and how to use staking and um, other DeFi things that are happening. So it's exciting. And uh, when I see news like this, right, the biggest institutions, regulated institutions coming in, banks, stock exchanges, I get more bullish and I keep buying the dips, <laughs> right? Uh, not financial advice, obviously do your own research, but exciting times are ahead, folks. Uh, this bull market cycle is going to be pretty epic, in my opinion, because all the big institutions are here. You know, in the past, it was taboo. It was not something they wanted to participate in. Now they are all uh, in a race. It's game theory playing out right before our eyes. Well, folks, that's the news. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Uh, be sure to check out our other sponsor, which is Uphold, which is a great crypto platform. I've been using it since 2018. You can buy Bitcoin and all the top altcoins. You can also trade precious metals such as gold, silver, palladium, platinum. Uh, they're available in over 150 countries. They also have proof of reserves. You can go review their transparency reports. They don't commingle or lend out your funds. So be sure to check out Uphold. Link will be in the description. Uh, like I said, folks, support the podcast by... Uh, follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter X. Also sign up for the free email newsletter. Thank you for your support. I will talk to you all later.